Hi everyone, I'm Lauren McBride and welcome to my brush preparation workshop. In this workshop, I'm going to teach you how to prepare your new brushes ready to be used on your clients. Let's get started. So welcome to my brush preparation workshop. So I have seen lots of different people on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram preparing their brushes to be able to be used for their nail services. Now there's lots of different ways you can do this, but I have been taught a way which I believe to be the correct way to prepare your brushes. Um, so that they're in the best condition possible to be able to use for nail services. So the main brush I'm gonna be preparing today is my acrylic brush, okay? But I am also going to show you how to prepare nail art brushes as well, because they are done in a completely different manner and treated in a different way. So the first thing I'm going to show you is my current acrylic brush. So this is from Crystal Nails and it's the A8 brush. As you can see, it comes with a lid. So I would always recommend to buy brushes that do have lids because for storage purposes, it means that they keep so much longer for and in better condition because you're not getting any dust or um, contamination within the brush, okay? So I'm just gonna show you the condition of my current acrylic brush. So as you can see, this is an A8 and I use it 99.9% .9 of the time for any of my acrylic work, okay? You can see it's a flat, oval so what makes an oval different to a round brush is it has this indentation here on the handle or shaft of the brush okay which is what makes it slightly flatter so a round brush doesn't have that indentation so it stays completely round so if i show you from this angle you can see that indentation I just bring that down slightly. That indentation makes the brush at the base flat, okay? Now, it's entirely up to you what size and what shape brush you use. Um, that's complete personal preference, but for me, it's either an A8 or a 10, um, and I always use an oval brush. So that's just what I trained with, and it's what I've got used to, and it's the brush I enjoy using, okay? So I'm just gonna pop that away because that is my current brush, all right? So I have got a new brush here. So this is from Nalkme. Again, it's an A8 and it still has the lid on, all right? And I'm just gonna take this out. So when you receive a new brush, this is how it will come, okay? So I've taken the lid off and you can see it's got a plastic protective shield on it, all right? So, you don't need to prepare a brush until you're ready to use it. So this can be done prior to you doing a client because um, it can tend to take some time depending on where you've got the brush from and who the manufacturer is. So I'm just gonna take this protective shield off. Now, please, 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 especially with your acrylic brush, do not be tempted to touch the bristles of your brush. No matter how clean our hands are, if we've got gloves on, our hands have got oil, contamination, germs, um, lots of different contaminants. And as soon as we touch the bristles of our acrylic brush, they have been absorbed by the hairs on the brush and they will stay there. So we want to keep our acrylic brush, especially, um, clear of any contaminants whatsoever. So I'm just gonna talk you through this brush. As you can see, again, it's the same size as my current brush, it's the A8. It has got the indentation, okay, um, which makes it an oval brush. And you can see a little bit clearer on this brush how flat it makes the base of that brush, okay. Um, and it's obviously an oval. So acrylic brushes have a point to them, 
all right? So you've got the point of the brush, the belly of the brush, and then the flank, which is this end here, all right? So when you get your brush, it's going to be stiff. And that is why we have to prepare it. Because if I was to dip this straight in my acrylic monomer, it would just clog up and it's not ready to be used. So do not, like I've said, at any point during the preparation or the whole lifetime of your brush, touch these bristles with your fingers because you will contaminate your brush. And contamination can cause lifting, it can cause a whole host of probable nail infections, and it can also cause yellowing of the product. So if your brush is contaminated, it will sit in the base of the brush. And for example, if you were doing a set of pink and whites, it can contaminate your liquid and powder um, in and it can make it yellow so we don't want that to happen so what I do is I get a clean piece of tissue so this could be couch roll it can be a napkin it can be tissue it can be whatever it is that you use but you must make sure that it's clean okay and what I'm going to do because this brush is stiff, you can see it's stiff. Now the reason it's stiff is because the preparation by the manufacturer, they use something called Arabic gum. So what the Arabic gum does is it helps to set the brush into its shape and it also helps to keep the brush in its shape during the transportation process, okay? So Arabic gum in acrylic brushes is really quite hard. So what we need to do is get that out. So you get hold of the brush, you Using your tissue okay at no point am I making contact with my fingers and I'm just going to run my fingers and flick the bristles out so this is going to make the bristles really poofy and it's going to go out of shape but do not panic okay so I'm just turning my brush each way and just flicking out through the tissue and you can see the white particles that are in the brush. I'll just wait for that to focus. You can see those white particles there. It's almost like um, dandruff. That is what we are getting rid of, okay? So I'm just using another clean part of my tissue and just flicking up through, and you can see that there, that Arabic gum starting to be dispersed and removed out of the brush now this process can take a little while but it's best to be patient each time i'm just turning my brush and flicking out that arabic gum you need to make sure you go right from the base of the brush right up to the tip okay so i'm going to get rid of this tissue and i've got a fresh piece of tissue again so you can see how out of shape that brush has gone now do not panic okay so again just flicking through and you have to keep going it's best to do this under a light because the light enables you to see if there's any more of that arabic gum coming out of the brush so once you're happy that that arabic gum and i'm just wiping it through once you're happy that that Arabic gum has all been removed from your brush, that is when we can pop it in our monomer. It's still not ready yet, so I'm just going to go through and just brush out any of that Arabic gum debris that's in there. Again, I'm just going to go through. You can see it's got less, okay, but there is still some in there. And you've got to be really patient at this stage because this is really important. The last thing you want to do is spend money on a new brush and not prepare it correctly. So again, I've just got some clean tissue, flicking that through. You have to be quite firm with it. Some brushes have more Arabic gum than others, so how long this takes, it really does depend on the manufacturer of your brush, okay? Just using a fresh part 
of my tissue I'm just going to go through there and I think I just flick that underneath the light yeah I think we're good we have got rid of all of that Arabic gum in there okay so now what I'm going to do again not touching my brush in any way shape or form apart from on the handle I'm going to get some fresh monomer now this doesn't have to be monomer that you use um, this is just to prepare your brush so it has to be clean monomer because again if you've got old monomer that is contaminated in any way shape or form so with um, an acrylic powder or if you've used it on clients then you should be using a fresh monomer for every single client okay so I'm just giving my this is my dish that I use for my monomer and I'm just making sure that is super squeaky clean and ready for my fresh monomer okay so now what I'm going to do again is get a piece of fresh kitchen towel or napkin or whatever it is that you use I'm going to pop that to the side of my uh, dish and I'm going to get some fresh monomer okay so I'm just going to pour that you don't need a lot just enough to fully submerge your brush okay so that's probably a quarter of an inch or so okay so now what I'm going to do I'm going to go straight in with my brush but because I use an oval brush I need to make sure I am pushing it down into the shape I want it to so I'm not going to go into my liquid this way I'm going to go in this way and I'm going to go straight in and push it down so the reason I'm pushing it down is to make sure that all of that monomer is fully getting into the whole of the brush so right from the base through to the tip okay I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to do exactly the same now you could see there there was a few air bubbles that's exactly what we're trying to get rid of so we don't want this swirling motion we don't want backwards and forwards we don't we're not mixing it up we are just saturating our brush in monomer okay and I'm just going to do that a few times and then I'm going to come off on the edge and just remove that excess monomer so my brush is fully loaded with monomer as you can see and this is where I start to train my brush into the shape that I use so some people like it more pointed so you can absolutely go on your edges and get that point into how you want it I personally like it quite flat so I'm not going to go side to side I'm going to go on the flat side can you see I'm flattening out my brush there we go I'm flattening out the tip of my brush so I'm keeping the belly nice and fat but I'm flattening out that tip again at no point am I touching my brush with my fingers that's so so important so again I'm just going to go in push and flatten and remove my excess monomer okay I'm just going to pop that monomer to one side because now what I'm going to do is if you've got any stray hairs I haven't on this one but sometimes you can get hairs that can pop out either side if that happens holding your tissue like we did when we prepared our brush you can go through and just push those back in so I've got one there so I'm just going to push that one back in and now I'm going to go back into my monomer again again pushing down removing any air bubbles so you could see those air bubbles pop out there if those air bubbles were left in our brush it would transfer into our bead when we pick up our bead for acrylic and we don't want that because we don't want clients to have air bubbles in their nails it can create a pocket and contamination within the nail and we lifting and all a whole host of problems which we don't want so that is now ready to use on a client 
okay so it's got clean monomer in there i have wiped it off but it hasn't got excess it's not dripping in any way shape or form and that is clean monomer in my brush ready to be used so now what i would do i would obviously prepare that before a client came in and i would again not touching it i always when i put my brushes away tap them on the side of the lid because that makes sure that you're not going to get any stray hairs kick out when you put your lid back on so i tap it and then pop it into the lid and that is ready to be used now at the end of your acrylic brush your lid should have a hole in it this is to be able to give the brush air so it doesn't get um, any germs or contamination that fester inside of the brush and you always need to store your brushes so if you've got a nail holder a uh, nail brush holder or a pot or tur or whatever it is you keep them in always keep them tip side down because what can happen if we store them this way is that monomer if I get it back out again that monomer is going to seep down and collect in the handle of your brush and that in itself can cause contamination if you've got a contaminated brush that is all just going to sit at the, in the handle at the base of your brush so to help to protect your brush even further once you pop the cap on you need to store it tip side down rather than tip side up so that anything that's in your brush is coming out of your brush okay so that is how to store and prepare your acrylic brush now that goes for any acrylic brush any size any shape and you can see i have had my brush that i use at the moment for over a year and it is still good it's not contaminated it's still in its shape and it's as good as new and that's because i've followed the correct preparation and the correct storing so you can see that's got a hole in it as well like my other one okay i'm storing my brush correctly it's super super important these brushes can be really expensive i always advise to invest in a good acrylic brush because it does make your life so much easier as a nail tech rather than buying cheaper brushes um so yeah so that is how i store my acrylic brush and prepare it this brush is a really old acrylic brush as you can probably tell it's seen better days i've had to cut hairs out of it now this brush i can touch because when i have old acrylic brushes that go i never throw them away because they're always useful for something so i always use this brush for my um, mixed media box work or 3D work, anything that isn't going on a client's nail, because it really doesn't matter that this brush is slightly out of shape because I've shaped it and worked with it to create 3D aspects of competition pieces. You can also, when you get this, an old acrylic brush, you can fluff it out, okay? And because of the nature of the bristle, bristles, because they're so soft and thick and fluffy, you, it makes an incredible glitter application brush as well. But obviously this is a really, really old brush, um, but I would, I would never say to throw old acrylic brushes away because they're always great for glitter application and any work that you're doing that isn't on a client, okay? So the same rule of thumb goes for um, your nail art brushes. But the difference is with a nail art brush, because the product that you're applying on a nail art brush isn't going directly onto the natural nail of the client, it doesn't matter if we touch it. So like one stroke and things like that, because we're using a gel polish and we're cleaning them regularly, you don't need to worry about touching your brush. Now I wouldn't recommend it and I would keep it to an as much of a minimum as possible, but you can touch your nail art brushes on the bristles okay now this is not a new brush so i do apologize i haven't got any new nail art brushes at the moment to be able to show you but that being said i can still show you how to prepare your brush so it does depend whether it is 
a flat brush so this is a one stroke brush and this is a phantom pointy brush so what you need to do they do not have arabic gum in them when they come as a new brush but they are slightly stiff so again i would get some clean kitchen towel couch roll or a napkin and i would go through and i would use my brush i want to keep it in that shape so i would turn that and just pull it through a clean napkin just to help to soften those bristles and that's as far as the preparation for your nail art brushes is concerned and also if it was a flat brush i would put this flat on the table or desk and i would just push it out being quite firm but keeping it the, the shape of the brush that we're working with so i wouldn't do that with a rounded brush because i don't want to flatten it and distort it so you would fold and roll okay and with a flat brush i would just keep turning it until it softens and that happens really quickly it only takes a couple of times of doing that but it will soften your brush again i would recommend to use brushes that have a lid on them so that we can store them correctly and so that no dust or debris or contamination gets into that brush okay I really hope you guys have found this helpful of how to correctly prepare your acrylic brush. Like I said, the main objective is not to touch it with your fingers. The only thing this acrylic brush should come into contact with is your monomer, your polymer, and putting it onto the client's nail, okay? You shouldn't come into contact with your fingers, a gloved hand, or your client's skin. Once it does, you're opening it up to contamination and you don't want that in your brush. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video and if you did, please make sure you click the like button and if you want to see any future videos, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell. See you all soon.